La Trap Triple. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one here, a triple, a Belgian triple from Holland, or the Netherlands, should I say. Holland, of course, is a region in the Netherlands. Most British people call it Holland. It's not. It's the Netherlands. Anyway, getting that out of the way. This is the La Trap, Trappist Triple from the Koenigshoven. I think that's how it's pronounced, the Koenig, Koenig's Hooven. I think that translates to the King's Hooves. Now, that's the literal translation. Again, if there's a Dutch subscriber here, I know there's a couple. There's a certain bass playing Dutch subscriber, excellent bass player. If he could tell me how it's pronounced, I would be most appreciative of that. It's brewed in the, the Koenigshoven Brewery, which is near Tilburg in in the Netherlands, which is, I think, that's quite near the Belgian border. I could be wrong though. Um, anyway, that's a triple. Now, it's a genuine Trappist product, believe it or not, and uh, there's only two Trappist breweries in the Netherlands, well, only one that's certified, and that's that one. But they're, you know, they've been only been going since 1884, and a lot of their beer was uh, contracted out to, of all people, Stella Artois. And that was taken over by AB InBev, of course, but luckily they took back the brewing in 1980. But this, the triple, has, an only, has only been going since 1987, which is relatively young. Now, of course, Belgium has got a huge, and I don't mean huge, brewing tradition of, especially like stuff like this, triples and stuff like that, you know. But that is quite a new one. And I've tried their other stuff as well. I've tried their double, I've tried the blonde, and it's really nice. And I thought I'd reviewed that, but I hadn't. So here, we're, here I am reviewing it. Now, this is, um, this is quite an interesting beer because, as I say, it's brewed in the Netherlands, but it's still got, it still maintains all that Belgian character, that Belgian Trappist character. Certainly the other two have. That's what I'm going on, and that's why I'm assuming this is the same. I could be wrong. So let's stop guessing, let's stop guessing, and let's investigate. Right, 330 mil bowl. It is 8%. See, so, you know, triples are, hence the name, triple. Singles don't normally get called singles, they're normally called blondes. And they're normally around the five percent mark. They're usually blonde in colour or gold in colour, quite hazy. Very nice, some of them. The doubles are a bit up from that, you know, between six and seven percent. They're darker, lots of caramel malt. Um, again, very nice tasting. And of course, you've got the triples, which are again blonde in colour. They have quite high ABV of eight percent, and They've, again, have got all that usual Belgian character in it. And then, of course, after that, you've got quadruples, which are, you know, 10% upwards. And they're dark in colour, so it's like alternating between light, dark, light, dark, with the singles, doubles, triples, and the quadruples. What a mouthful that is. Fuck me. This is quite interesting. The ingredients on this, they do, it does contain a lot of hops. Now, for a Belgian beer, that's not really what you would so associate with Belgian beers. It's all about the malt, it's all about the sugar, the, f the dried fruit flavors, not really the sort of hops that you get in there, but this has got quite a few. This has got Tetnanga hops, it's got Northern Brewer hops, it's got Slovenian Super Steria, 
they're I'm assuming a, a sort of a, a hybrid of Styrian hops I should have should have investigated that but if it's coming from Slovenia it's usually the Styrian type golden hops that you get from them and it also contains the old German Hallertauer hops the the Bavarian favorite which is one of the noble hops as well so it's it's shaping up to be quite interesting and of course the malts on this are interesting you've got pale malt which of course is the base malt and that's you know that's present in most beers you have a base or pale malt that makes up most of the grain bill but on this one you've got caramel and you've got munich malt in it as well so again that is quite interesting now that will i'm pretty sure um I can't, can i see it on the ingredients water malt with barley it contains glucose syrup now normally the belgians would put candy sugar which is un, unrefined caramelized beet sugar they put glucose syrup in it which um, you know it, it will taste a little bit different and i don't know why the fuck he's crying out there he's a fucking idiot but it's uh it, i think putting the dextrose and glucose and stuff like that i think it's a bit of a compromise to be honest i think if you do it with the sugar it just tastes a little bit nicer so let's stop gassing let's get this beer investigated Fuck's sake, he's crying because he couldn't get his toy. Jesus, man, he's like having kids. Oh, look, and he's kicking off now with Percy. Brilliant. <laughs> obviously, obviously, toys are very serious in the dog world. Anyway, I'm just going to get this beer open. Right, wow. And again, the first thing that hits me, a lot of hop character on that, which is unusual for a triple. That's interesting. Don't normally get that. There's the cat. There you go. Thank you, Autofocus, for doing what you, I fucking pay you for. Right, let's get this into the glass. Now, I'm using a chalice. That is the recommended style of glass for this. Now, normally, triples have a lot of carbonation with that sugar and the extra yeast that they put in there. You do get a lot of carbon dioxide. And that is... God, the hops... I'm, you know, when I put my nose up to it, I really am getting a lot of hops in it, and that's unusual for a triple, from from my experience. Now, of course, I've tried a few triples before. Some of them were really good, and it's unusual for the hops to be this forward in it. They're not American hops, you know, you, I've just reeled them off, and they're all traditional, sort of German-esque type hops or European hops. There is a mountain of carbonation which I would expect. And it's cloudy, the head is dissipating at a rate of knots, which it normally would with such a high ABV. And it's quite warm in this room as well, so that's probably not doing it any favors. What are we getting on the nose? Sweet banana, clove. There's a lot of earthiness to it, which I'm assuming is coming from them hops. And when I opened the bottle, that just wafted out that it wasn't sulfur at all it was just hop earthiness and spiciness and you know that that herbal type aroma there's a sweet caramel on this and all and that's coming through and it's very sweet and i'm assuming that's a, the glucose sugar or the glucose syrup i should say sorry it does smell interesting Let's get this down the hatch. Good elf. And that is not bad. That is very nice indeed. First thing that hits you is caramel, very sweet caramel malt and sweet banana on top of that as well. But then as that goes down, it's just, it's just earth and herbal, like grassy notes from them hops. 
and I'm not surprised the amount of hops they've got in there. That's unusual. I don't recall. I don't recall triples or a triple that I've tasted in the past having that real big hop character on this. I'm not sure whether I've got a rogue bottle or not, but I doubt that. The spirit alcohol is very subtle on this, but it is there. But it's not like some of the other triples I've tried where it's big and you get that huge warming as it goes down. Not getting that on this at all. This is quite balanced. Carbonation is there, of course, as you would expect with most doubles and triples, especially with all that, that sugar added to it and the yeast. Because, of course, you've got to remember this is bottle conditioned. So there is going to be a lot more carbonation in that naturally carbonated as well as the I imagine artificial carbonation that's put in here as well and it does make up for quite a quite a robust sort of mouthfeel I don't know if you can see the can you see the carbonation in there it is like a little tornado in that glass yeah look you should be able to see that now just give that a little bit of a bit of a swirl I really can get them. I think it's the Hallertower hops that are coming through on there. But it's really nice. And that does make a change. Yeah, let's aggravate that a little bit. Not only will this create a little bit of a head, but it will calm that carbonation down in there too. it's quite sweet and it's weird the other day I was in um, I was where was it it was the Sellers Ale House in Maidstone which is like a craft brew type pub and we were drinking an American style IPA which was quite bitter and after that I ordered a, a West Mail triple and the contrast with the sweetness on it with the bitter hops the bitter american hops was quite pronounced and do you know what it tasted absolutely gorgeous um i don't think this is up there with the west Mall, but it's not a bad triple it's certainly got more more of the hops coming through there oh and that's that's a lot smoother now i've just swelled that about mm. really nice it's a very sweet beer. If you can imagine sweet, sweet caramel, sweet banana, a little touch of clove, little touch of white pepper, and then some earthiness on the finish from them Hallertau hops. After swirling it about a bit, the, that big hop character has died down on it a bit. But it's very nice. <laughs> and it does taste like a good triple. So what's the verdict on La Trappe? Yeah, very nice indeed. Very in keeping with the Belgian triple style. It's quite sweet and I've used glucose syrup. Now, as I said, a lot of the Belgian stuff, it uses candy sugar. This, I think, is a touch sweeter with that glucose syrup. But what really done it for me was that initial hop burst or the hop flavor that was coming from this which you don't normally get in most triples but that really did shine through and that impressed me because it really complemented it it was quite sweet in the mouth and then on the finish it was quite earthy now that i've swirled it about a bit i think what happens is that calms the carbonation down so the flavor the flavors don't get pushed around the mouth as much but it's uh, believe me there is still a hell of a lot of flavor in this And it's super smooth now as well. <clears throat> Dangerously drinkable too. I really like that. That is a good. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. I think it's that good. And I think as well I could quite 
you know, get quite used to that. And I think I could drink about three or four of these. And I think my legs, legs would give way before my appetite would. And uh, yeah, this is a real good one. But it's what I'd expect from La Trap because La Trap are a really good, or I'm not saying La Trap, De Koenigshoven Brewery do some great beer under this La Trap name. Really impressive. The double's really good and the blonde is really good. Now I've tried the triple. I'm sure there must be another one I can try from them, but you know, these are three great beers and that hasn't let the side down at all. I'm giving that a nine out of 10. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I have tasted slight, very slightly better triples, but that is a real good one. I'm definitely gonna recommend that. So yeah, well that came from, where did that come from? Was that beer sniffers or was that? Let me see, it could have been, uh, 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 no, that was Noble Green. I don't have the Noble Green price list to hand, but I think it was about 280, I think it was under three pound or three pound thereabouts. But yeah, very nice indeed. It's one to be savoured one to have when you're eating something as well don't think this is a session beer because believe me you will fucking pay big time if you try and session this stuff it's eight percent you might as well get you know four cans of kestrel try and session that see how you end up so yeah nine out of ten recommended and remember beer is working class champagne